Okay, we're going to start the 6 p.m. workshop, and we have the infamous Nick Fiddler on the trip program for Metropolitan Bakersfield. Good evening. I'm Nick Fiddler, Public Works Director for the City of Bakersfield. Tonight, I'll be giving you an update on our Centennial Corridor project. So, as you can see, uh, this project is one of the Thomas Road Improvement Programs, more commonly known as TRIP. TRIP started in 2006 and is continuing to complete several uh, projects to improve regional and local traffic through the metropolitan Bakersfield area. It initially was uh, funded with $630 million in federal funds, which has increased to over $1.4 billion in both federal, state, local, um, and various other funding sources. This is a list of 14 projects that have been completed since the 2006 initiation of the TRIP program. Um, several of the projects lie within the City of Bakersfield uh, metropolitan area. Uh, Seventh Standard is one that's on the northern boundary of uh, Bakersfield. That was a County of Kern project. And let me back up. I, I went a little too fast. The TRIP program is comprised of four different agencies. It's the uh, County of Kern, Caltrans, Kern Cog, and the City of Bakersfield. The City of Bakersfield is the lead uh, for the project. Thank you, Aaron. Um, and also um, Parsons, the city retained Parsons as their program manager for the, the program. The uh, list of projects completed, it's just over half a billion dollars at this point. We currently have an additional uh, six projects under construction, which is totaling just over $300 million for construction costs. Uh, the, the Centennial Corridor was broken up into four phases, and, and phase one is the Kern River Bridge improvements, which is anticipated to be complete this September. Uh, it is con uh, contractor security paving. The Bell Terrace Operational Improvement Project, this project is on State Route 99. It took out the existing Bell Terrace Bridge over 99 because it had some deficiencies with it. It was too low of a bridge height, and then it didn't have enough width to accommodate the additional lanes that are necessary for some of the connectors within the 58 and 99 corridor. I'll get it a little bit more detail in these projects as we move forward into the presentation. Uh, Bakersfield Freeway Connector is um, the Centennial Corridor Phase 3 project. Uh, and then 24th Street Improvements is not part of the Centennial Corridor, but it is a project that's under construction. And most of you that came here today probably got tangled up in some of the traffic um, coming through that project. Uh, that's improving both uh, 23rd and 24th Street between Oak Street and M Street. And then the Centennial Corridor Main Line, which is the project we just had the groundbreaking for last week, which is the major connection piece of roughly 1.5 miles of uh, new freeway, which will connect State Route 58 at its current terminus at Real Road and then connect it to the West Side Parkway, which is just around the uh, Truxton Avenue uh, interchange. And then the last project that's under construction is Stockdale Highway Enos Lane Roundabout. That is at the very west end of town. It's actually in the county, but it is connection to the Centennial Corridor in the fact that it's a, it's a uh, freeway to freeway or conventional highway to conventional highway uh, interchange that we're trying to correct. Uh, it's currently an always stop with the roundabout. It'll improve the um, operations of that intersection. The Centennial Quarter Project, uh, this is the largest of all the TRIP programs, like I said, this, uh, uh, and it is the final piece of the uh, uh, TRIP program. The environmental clearance took about eight years to complete. We started that, uh, obviously, in 2006. We started some of the project approval process, and then we moved into the environmental document phase. It, it went from 2007 to 2015 to complete that environmental document. We uh, relocated over 200 residential and three, 30 commercial properties. 
were, they were acquired through an early acquisition process. We were the first in the nation to actually go through this process where we were, went through and acquired properties prior to the environmental document was complete. This was a process that was identified in the MAP uh, 21 process. Uh, the cost to acquire these properties were roughly $140 million. Uh, the project was split into four phases to advance construction uh, of various phases as fundings were secured. This also helped us break down the construction pa packages to man manageable for the contractors as well. So the city obtained the following additional funding from, uh, for construction of these projects. Uh, we received a $25 million uh, grant from SB1 under the Trades Corridor Enhancement Program. This was for the, um, the loop connector, the Bakersfield Freeway Connector Project. And then we received a $50 million infra grant, this is federal, that we received uh, just last year. Um, this is for the main line construction. And these are very highly competitive grants that we were able to, uh, to secure from. And then uh, $63 million from the STIP program through the state, and then $31 million for the SHOP program, and th that was d uh, dedicated towards the Bell Terrace project. The $50 million and the $63 million were for the main line uh, portion of the bridge. This is a total uh, new funding of $169 million, which all occurred within the past 18 months. So the Centennial Corridor construction phases, this breaks up the different phases. If you're uh, looking at phase one, which is in the orange at the left-hand side of the screen, that is the Kern River Bridges in, uh, improvements. Uh, and then moving into phase two, which is the uh, Bell Terrace project, Again, that's uh, in green. The freeway connector project is in red, and the mainline interchange project is phase four. That, the mainline was a $147 million project that was just uh, awarded, and the groundbreaking ceremony was last week. So phase one, Kern River Bridges project was awarded to Sur Security Paving Company for $41 million. Construction started in August 2017, and of course, this is when we had the most rain uh, and now have water down the river, so that's made the project challenging at best, uh, but we've been very uh, lucky and fortunate that we were able to get all the false work in until before the main water st started coming down this year. Uh, so it, we were able to maintain schedule, even though we've seen the most water in that section of the river in, in probably in decades. It's a 24-month construction project, and it's expected to be complete uh, to, uh, September of this year. Uh, Centennial Quarter, oh, went wrong direction there. Oh, here we go. So that's just circling that, that section of the phase. So this is a rendering of what the final project will look like. Uh, the long bridge on the north, uh, the top side of the screen is the new off-ramp that's being built for the westbound to Mohawk off-ramp. That's a, a, a pretty high bridge. It elevates to go over the um, westbound to west, westbound Truxton Avenue on-ramp to the uh, 58 extension. Oh, and, and to clarify, the West Side Parkway will ultimately become State Route 58 once all this is connected. This is another uh, construction photo. Um, we have significant more progress than this now that the bridges actually connect uh, between the um, West Side Parkway and Truxton Avenue now. Uh, this is, again, more construction photos of the uh, Kern River Bridge improvements. But see all the false work and the uh, rebar going into the bridge deck. This is the, the major main line. The bottom picture is the major main line um, for extending both east and westbound of State Route 58. Moving into phase two, the Bell Terrace project. 
So these improvements are shown in blue. Again, the, the major component of this project was uh, demolishing the existing Bell Terrace Bridge over State Route 99. This is just south of State Route 58 uh, interchange. The, to the left of the screen, you get to see some of the connector ramps that are connecting to eastbound um, State Route 58. So the ramp that's sweeping to the to the east there is the northbound State Route 99 to eastbound State Route 58. Uh, again, the Bell Terrace Bridge needed to be demolished because it only had about a 15-foot-4 vertical clearance. The new uh, highway standards is 16.5. So that was one of the major deficiencies with the bridge. And the other deficiency was the width. It would not allow for all the uh, aux lanes and connector ramps that would be necessary for a full interchange at State Route 58 and 99. This project was awarded to Granite Construction Company for $32 million. The construction started in October of 2018, and it is an 18-month construction window. Um, the revised completion date uh, is uh, September 2020. We did hit a little bit of um, uh, delays. There was some un uh, unknown um, components, or actually old bridge, buried in the embankment of um, State Route 99, uh, we were lucky. We went back to the CTC, and the CTC awarded us another $3 million for those unidentified uh, elements that uh, delayed the project a month or two. See, these are some of the project uh, construction photos. You can see on the right-hand side the bridge com completely removed. The columns are now placed in the middle of State Route 99, and they are working on the west abutment. Now moving into uh, phase three of the uh, Centennial Corridor. This is the freeway connector. This freeway connector is really the westbound to southbound movement for State Route 58. This is a very heavily traveled movement for freight, so that's why we were successful in receiving state uh, SB1 funds for uh, trades corridor enhancement because of the, the, uh, the major uh, freight movements in this that corridor. The existing uh, loop ramp there was too narrow. It was, it was the radius was too narrow. Uh, trucks would have to come to a, a real crawl to make it around that turn. And also we needed to expand the uh, 99 underneath the 58. So we're, we're able to push the, the loop ramp to the west to accommodate for growth and aux lanes underneath the 99-58 interchange. The elements shown in red are all the improvements associated with the uh, Bakersfield Freeway connector. As you can see, it, it goes from just north of uh, State Route 58 along the west side of 99, connecting all the way down to Ming Avenue. The purpose of going all the way to Ming Avenue is, I, I'm sure if many of you have drove 99 between 58 and Ming Avenue, there's always a significant amount of queuing of vehicles that back up into the freeway main line. These uh, new ramps and connectors will separate these movements prior to getting to State Route 58. So it'll bring aux lanes and move the traffic off the main line freeway and get them over to where they can get off to uh, 58 or get off on Ming Avenue without getting tangled up in the weaving and merging that will be happening with the new ramps of State Route 58 for the westbound. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of ramps, uh, new auxiliary lanes, and you can see why, through this photo, why we needed to ex uh, extend the length of Bell Terrace Bridge. The, the element shown in green is part of the main line. It, it just, that's, that green uh, movement there is the new uh, eastbound to southbound connector ramp, which will tie into Ming Avenue. That uh, one will tie into Ming Avenue and one will tie into 99 Main Line. The, sec the second one that just came up is the 99 connector to Main Line. And then uh, now we'll have a new movement for eastbound uh, uh, through the State Route 58 interchange. 
So this project was awarded to Security Paving Company. This was a $49 million project. The project started construction in February 2019. It's a 30-month construction project, and it is anticipated to be complete in August 2021. This is uh, some of the construction photos right now. There's not, it hasn't been a whole lot of activity at this point, but we have removed the street su structural section of the Highway 58 between Real Road and 99 to set up for some, a lot of the construction activities that are going to happen within that area. So moving into the main line, this is the, the last piece of the puzzle. This project will develop all the, the improvements in green. You can see the, the brown swath that the green uh, goes through. The city went through and acquired all those properties, uh, like I mentioned, uh, 200 residential and 30 uh, commercial properties to, to prepare for that sw swath of land. We did also uh, do some pre-construction activity to kind of isolate the residents from the construction activity by by building sound walls. We came in first to correct all the local streets, make the connections, and terminate the roadways, and then built sound walls through the, uh, the mainline corridor where we could at grade so it would limit impacts to the adjacent residential as we moved into full construction of the mainline. So this project was awarded to Security Paving again for $147 million. Uh, construction is to st start next month. They have kind of pre-mobilized already and are, they're moving some dirt around, uh, but no major construction activity has happened. They're, they're really just gearing up to start some major earth hauling movements in July. Uh, this is, again, a 36-month construction project, and it is anticipated to be complete in August of 2022. So as I'd mentioned, there was a, a groundbreaking ceremony just last week um, at the site. We were up on top of one of the major, uh, the Mohawk uh, off-ramp bridge. It's probably 40 feet up in the air, had a great view to the south. You could look down the corridor of the construction uh, corridor for Centennial Corridor. Um, this is uh, some of the renderings that are, will be uh, uh, what's going to actually look like at State Route 58 and 99. This is looking on, on State Route 99 to the north. You can see all the additional ramps that will be added. This is starting to look like an LA freeway interchange. <laughs> it's about time. So this is looking at the corridor, right, what I talked about, where we have went through and built some of the sound walls and acquired the property. Uh, this is what it currently looks like today. We have the uh, sound walls on either side of the property where we could. Um, and then moving into this rendering, this is what the ultimate facility will look like. On, uh, as part of the Centennial Corridor main line, we are also building a one mile length of uh, multi-use path, which will connect the California Avenue to, to all the way to the Kern River Parkway. So we'll have a new multi-use path that will connect the uh, downtown business district down, now down by California all the way to the Kern River Bike Path w Parkway, which is about a 32 mile uh, path. Again, this is uh, construction photos. Looking to the, this is looking to the south from the uh, Truxton Avenue loop ramp, looking down the corridor. And this is a, a, a rendering of what it will look like. And, and like I mentioned, once the project is complete, this will become State Route 58, ultimately extending State Route 58 nine and a half miles past the 99 uh, corridor. So the the, the uh, 58 will take a will take you the new f extension will take you to the uh, western edge of the Bakersfield city limits. And that completes my presentation. Be happy to answer any questions. 
Thank you, Nick. Any questions? I just uh, want to repeat when I first was elected about six years ago, we thought we were going to have to borrow about $270 million for all these projects. And because of the good work of everybody involved, we will not have to borrow anything. And so that's uh, good news, and it's a great regional project for everybody. Thank you. We will now start the 6.30 meeting of Kern <laughs> Council of Governments, Transportation, Planning, and Policy Committee. Pledge of Allegiance, please. Stand. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Alvarado. Here. Cantu. Couch. Crump. Here. Corolla. Present. Lucinovich. Here. Cryer. Bryant's here in his stead. Mauer. Here. Reyna. Here. Scrivener. Here. B. Smith. I'm here. here. P. Smith. Sorry. B and then P. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> We're both here. Sorry about that. <laughs> and Vallejo. Carr. Here. Miller. Here. Para. I am here. Kersey. Here. And Van Wyck. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes with the authority of the chair to extend the time limit as deemed appropriate for conducting the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Are there any public comments? Our friend from the Sheriff's Department who's going to be leaving us. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ian Silva, Kern County Sheriff's Office. Uh, before I get to the, uh, uh, our inability to renew the contract, I would like to provide some data in the closing of the contract. Now, obviously, there's a few more days left in the existing contract, so this is close to the year-end data, but obviously we have a few more days left. This is throughout the course of the 2018-2019 contract. Our deputies worked a total of 818.5 hours. Uh, the inmate labor work hours uh, added up to 4,914 with a year-to-date savings, total year savings of our estimate is $130,000 and uh, excuse me, one hundred thirty thousand four dollars and forty four cents. I get that forty four <laughs> cents in there. Apologies. Uh, some of the ar areas we've recently visited in the last few months since I since uh, I last was here, uh, we've been um, in McFarland near Sherwood Avenue in North uh, in Northbound ninety nine, uh, Highway one nineteen and Highway thirty three in Taft and Maricopa, uh, Southbound ninety nine near Pond Road and County Road Line and uh, the 178 in the Kern Canyon. Um, as you alluded, um, I, it's my understanding staff did notify the board that the sheriff's office was no longer uh, going to be able to renew this contract moving into the new fiscal year. Um, some of you may be aware of some of the staffing challenges the sheriff's office has been facing in recent, in recent times. And we've come to the conclusion that we really do need to reallocate the deputy that was assigned to this contract back into the jails to uh, maintain and supervise normal da uh, j daily j j jail operations. I meant to say day-to-day -day operations. That's what I was struggling with. Again, sorry about that. 
Um, if staffing does improve, the sheriff's office would be certainly open to consideration of reinitiating the project if we get to the point where we feel that's feasible, assuming that your board is is interested in redoing and doing that. Um, I would like to point out, I would like to say that the sheriff's office has long valued the partnership this board has with us and the good work we've been able to accomplish together. And I want to thank your board for the support and partnership in doing this con in doing this project and running this program for their community work crews. And with that, I'm certainly open to any questions your board may have. Thank you. Uh, we certainly do hate to see the program go away and, and perhaps in the future we can reinstate it. Any other comments from board members? I do have a question, Mr. Chair. I certainly. Sorry about that. Uh, just for my edification, what type of services was provided by KCSO? Is it to the COG or to the county? Uh, the COG supports financially uh, a group, uh, a, a detentions deputy and a group of inmate laborers who work with Caltrans to do road haz hazard removal and cleanup in various areas of the county. Thank you. Not at all, sir. Thank you very much. Again, thank you, and we are sorry to be leaving. Any other public comments? Seeing none, we move to the consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern Cog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the committee or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the list, least listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the committee concerning the item before action is taken. Does anyone in the public wish to remove a consent item or any board member? Seeing none, can I have a motion? Motion. I'll second. It's a roll call vote. Alvarado? Yes. Grump? Yes. Garola? Yes. Lucinovich? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Maurer? Yes. Reyna? Yes. B. Smith? Yes. Scrivener? Aye. P. Smith? Here. Or, I'm sorry, aye. <laughs> Carr? Yes. Miller? Yes. Para? Yes. Kersey? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Kern Electric Vehicle Charging Station Blueprint update from Ms. Urata. Good evening, Chair and Board. Um, I'm here to present the Kern Electric Vehicle Charging Station Blueprint. It's this document here, suitable for bedtime reading. And comments were received on this document. They've been incorporated as appropriate into the final document, which is posted on our website. The Transportation Technical Advisory Committee heard this item at their meeting on June 5, 2019. The California Energy Commission's Alternative and Renewable Fuel and Vehicle Technology Program awarded $200,000 of Phase I grant funding to Kern Council of Government in partnership with the Center for Sustainable Energy to develop the Kern Electric Vehicle Charging Station Blueprint. The purpose of the Kern Blueprint is to accelerate the deployment of zero emission technologies um, to help reach Kern COG's 2018 Regional Transportation Plan air quality goals. A diverse working group was formed to provide guidance, input, and feedback on the document. And in addition, this document was um, taken to the Transportation Technical Advisory Committee and the Regional Planning Advisory Committee on several occasions. Phase one is for the development of the planning blueprints by June 30th, 2019 to identify the actions and milestones needed to proceed towards implementation. Selection for phase one affords KernCog the opportunity to submit the completed blueprint to compete for and receive future funding from the CEC under phase two for implementation of the completed blueprint. The CEC plans to release the RFP for phase two in the fourth quarter of 2019. Um, so we'll be probably writing another grant soon. The final draft of the blueprint um, acts as a guidance document for the development of a robust network of electric vehicle charging stations throughout Kern County. 
Um, as a note, it does not include corridor charging because, um, as you'll see if there's a handout on the table, the CEC and CARB are funding corridor stations as well as um, in private investment from Electrify America. So the corridor charges is, is happening outside of this document. The goal um, uses two scenarios. There's um, EVI Pro tool, which projects 1,364 charging spaces will be needed by 2025. Scenario B uses population and projects that 4,426 charging spaces will be needed by 2025. Um, the four areas that we do address are workplace, multi-unit dwelling, public agency, and destinations. Um, and it's listed by corridor, um, by city or unincorporated territory. Each project concept has its own toolkit, providing step-by-step -step guidance and resources for installing charging stations. And those toolkits will be finalized uh, probably tomorrow and posted to our um, KernCog website for future use. Um, the outreach efforts will begin uh, as soon as this is received and filed tonight, we hope. And outreach efforts will begin um, starting next week. We'll be in Ridgecrest hosting, um, we're, we're sponsoring um, an EVs Made Easy workshop. There's also flyers on the table for that in Ridgecrest on Tuesday, June 25th. And then we'll also be down at the Statewide Energy Efficiency Conference. We're um, doing a presentation at that conference on Thursday, the 27th. And then from there on out, we'll continue with outreach and efforts to promote um, implementation of the blueprint. Um, and that concludes um, my report for the evening. Thank you, Ms. Roth. Any questions or comments? I, I have one. Are any of these, somebody asked me other, the other day, do we have supercharged stations? Are these supercharged? I mean, I looked at it. It has. The stations that are being installed by Electrify America or by sometimes the Tesla stations are called superchargers because they're at a higher kilowatt. Um, ChargePoint and others like EVgo as well as Electrify America have what they call a DCFC or level three charger and those might are at like 50 kilowatts or higher and those are also considered fast chargers but probably not super fast. Um, I think we do have some super fast in addition to the Teslas, the ones that are being installed on California um, next to the Panera will be of that. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Seeing none, I need a motion to receive and file. I move uh, to receive and file. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Caltrans report. Uh, good evening. So as ha I've been doing for quite a while, have you probably have the most projects of all the five COGS that I go to. So if you don't know that, that's a good thing. <laughs> so right now, that Cal's Prince is spending a lot of money here. Uh, so let's start with uh, Famoso, the 4699 bridge, which has been going on for quite some time. Um, they're doing the hot mix um, asphalt paving. Um, they'll be done though, um, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. And then they're going to do uh, repair work um, from June 30th to July 2nd with the final pavement and grinding. So they should be done um, by mid July. So if they stay on schedule, uh, probably won't report on this next month except to say we're done. Um, the State Route 46, a very important project um, uh, to widen 46 from two to four lanes um, between Lost Hills and I-5. Uh, current activities, they're demoing the main flood canal bridge, clearing and grubbing, commence main flood canal bridge, current five bridge construction to start next week, and then some road excavation. Uh, as far as lane closures, uh, Warren Drive is closed for south side businesses. Uh, Kern I-5, um, one of the lanes will be closed uh, for uh, during that bridge construction. They plan to complete this project this time next year. Uh, for the, uh, 99, on 99, um, about 0.3 miles south of Palm Avenue overcrossing, 
to Beardsley Canal Bridge. That's um, the 178 and nine, the 99 178 separation. That's where this is. Um, they're doing uh, rehabilit pavement rehabilitation. Work currently scheduled for the next 30 days. Um, southbound medium work just south of Palm Avenue overcrossing to north of uh, State Route 204 overcrossing. Possible panel replacement in the northbound and southbound lanes, um, number one lanes from um, Olive Drive to Beardsley Canal. The Rosedale, on Rosedale Highway, they're going to remove um, ADL, that's uh, aerial deposited lead, and begin construction of the retaining wall. Uh, as far as traffic control, extended lane closures are currently in place um, and will not be reopened to traffic until 2021. The number one lane on the northbound side has been closed uh, from State Route 58 overcrossing to just north of uh, 204 overcrossing. Also the number one, the southbound lane, uh, number one southbound lane, that's been closed from Beardsley Canal to just south of Palm Avenue overcrossing. Nightly closure of adjacent lanes may be needed uh, weekly from Sunday to Thursdays to complete the work on the Palm Avenue overcrossing to Beardsley Canal. Only one closure will be permitted per direction. Ramps are not currently anticipated to be closed. A Cottonwood uh, East rehabilitation on State Route 58 in Bakersfield uh, from Cottonwood Road under crossing to just east of the 58 and 184 separation. This project is progressing in the westbound direction currently. Hot mix asphalt has been placed um, between 184 and Oswald. Additional days have been asked by the contractor, uh, so it's going to push the working days to August 8th. Uh, Cache Creek uh, bridge replacement on 58, um, that's east of Tehachapi from Sand Canyon overhead to point, half a mile east of Cache Creek. Contractors working on reinforcing inside shoulders and constructing medium crossovers in preparation for traffic switch. Paving will start July 1st to the 3rd, with striping taking place from July 8th through the 10th. Um, work for that following month or uh, the month of July is paving for medium crossover, restriping for traffic switch, and structure demolition uh, later in the month of July. The summit uh, overhead bridge rails um, uh, on 58 near to Hatchby at summit overhead. As of uh, June 17th, all the care rails are in place. Grinding is in progress, and the bridge will begin. They will be begin the bridge work next month. Laredo Canyon Canal medium gap closure uh, near Bakersfield at Laredo Canal on 90. This is on 99. The project is currently de delay, still currently still delayed due to the nesting birds. However, they do think that. In mid-July, they might be able to start some work. So if you're in that area, make a lot of noise, do something to get rid of these birds. <laughs> Maybe a nice BB gun would help. <laughs> so, uh, you you know, it doesn't make sense. I mean, if, they, if we're there worried about them, why did the birds come in there? If, you know, if the construction was going to bother them, they wouldn't have come in the first place. So... But evidently, they're trying to keep them calm and not disturb them. Uh, Bell Terrace Overcrossing. That's construct an ox lane and replace Bell Terrace Bridge on 99. Northbound retaining wall is underway. The columns for the center bent are poured for Bell Terrace Bridge. The Bell Terrace Bridge abutments are currently being formed. And the California Aqueduct Bridge, uh, that's to do uh, overlay, so pavement improvements. Um, it's on I-5 and uh, it's I-5 and 99, and that's to improve the load rating um, on the bridge, and it's near the uh, grapevine. Bridge overlay with polyester concrete completed as of June 6. Over the next few weeks, the K-Rail would be placed on the northbound and southbound lanes at the bridge to construct new concrete medium and shoulder barriers. 
That will be followed by reconstruction of the northbound and southbound approach slabs. I-599 bridge separation and pavement. Um, this is uh, at the junction of I-599 and Panama overcrossing. Um, work currently scheduled for the next 30 days. Lower, so this is what they're doing the next 30 days. Lowering of lanes and shoulders, vertical clearance improvement. Northbound 99 at Route 5 overcrossing. Work includes excavation, um, hot mix asphalt, and reinforced um, continuous concrete. Northbound medium work from Davis to Corpus Christi Road to Union Avenue. That work includes excavation, aggregate base pa placement, um, hot mix asphalt, and rein reinforced hot mix, mix asphalt. H it's really HMA or HMA paving. Uh, trimming and trimming the oleanders throughout the project limits. Traffic control, so a lot of traffic control going on. Long-term closure with k -Rail, 24 hours, seven days a week. So they're doing the southbound 99s reduced to two lanes at I-5, northbound 99s reduced to two lanes, and deterred onto southbound 99 at I-5. Northbound 99 is reduced to two <coughs> lanes from Sandria Road to Union Avenue. Northbound Route 99 may be reduced to one lane nightly from David to Cor Corpus Christi Road to Union Avenue. Nightly closures in place from Sunday night through Friday night, six nights per week. Ramps close, um, a ramp closure not currently anticipated. Did you guys all follow that? Because that, really? I don't live here, so <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. But I, but you guys, okay, well, good. I'm glad to hear that because sometimes I wonder. Um, so Stockdale and Ennis, ra the roundabout at <coughs> 43 and Stockdale Highway. Uh, it's actually an oversight project, um, but start of construction will be the uh, June 24th. So that's like what, next week, Monday, something? What's today? Today's the 20th, 20th I think. Um, that's so good. I'll, I'll be anxious to report on roundabout. I love the roundabouts. Um, 119 and 43, another roundabout. A contractor closed 43 to through traffic last Tuesday. Contractor is wrapping up the temporary pavement area for a traffic bypass, and the eastbound 119 traffic is scheduled to switch to westbound 119. Roadway improvements, uh, once temporary striping and K-Rail has been placed, westbound 119 improvements will continue through July. Gap closure, uh, rehabilitation project on 5899 separation to Cottonwood Road. Um, current activities, construction should be completed in August, August 30th, that's my anniversary, which includes eastbound lanes, replacement and westbound, 50 years, by the way. <laughs> I know. Someone told me, had to tell me that. They asked me when I got married. I go, in 69, and they go, oh, you've been married 50 years. I go, I have? No. <laughs> I didn't. I honest. I don't think about it. When you get to a certain age, you don't want to think about that. Um, anyways, and I actually met him when I was 15, so it's been longer than 50 years. Which in, okay, so getting back. Construction should be completed August 30th. Now you all know that. Uh, which includes eastbound lanes replacement, westbound lane number two replacement, two-week <coughs> look ahead, rebarb replacement, hot mix asphalt HMA replacement, and CRCP, continuous reinforced concrete pavement. Um, they plan to complete this December 30th of 2020, so into the end of the year. And this is a simple project, uh, but I left it on here anyway. It's um, it's a construct ro a rock blanket at gore areas and maintenance vehicle pullouts. Roadway excavation underway at gore. Oh, it's on State Route 58. So roadway excavation underway at gore areas and maintenance vehicle pullouts along 178 from Avenue M to Oswald, Oswald Street. Nightly ramp closures at multiple locations and intermittent shoulder closures along 178. That concludes my report. I just stand myself. Uh, 
Any questions? I should leave that on. Any questions? I have one again, too. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, on uh, 46, coming back from the coast, is there any way they can, at Black Wells Corner, mm -hmm. say that there's going to be a delay, you know, when you're going to Lost Hills? Because we were probably stuck there, stopped for about 20, 25 minutes and until I turned around and went back. Yeah. And if you if if you could just let traffic know yeah. before they get to Blackwell's, they'd go 33 exactly. and, and go south. And I've actually complained about that, not just at that area, just in general. If, you're, if there's an accident, we need more TMS, those TMS signs, changeable message signs, to tell you, to give you the option of there's an there's traffic hit or there's an accident or something get at least to get off and john and i are working on and this is for 99 um i'm going to be looking at a cor corridor corridor management plan there's not much you can do with 99 except widen it we need to widen it there's i mean we're not going to put bikes we're not going to put pedestrians it's just at intersections we have opportunities for alternative modes of transportation but at least when there's an incident and like that, it cripples the system. So working with um, City of Bakersfield, we'll be working with them, or City of Fresno, where the much upon areas, where we can tell them in plenty of time to get off and use a parallel route. City's going to have to adapt their system, their signals to handle that kind of traffic, but so you can go around or whatever to get out of that, you know, gridlock. It, it helps. And um, so it's, it's a long ways away, but it's, it's a must. And, and I'm going to take that complaint back because I have the same complaint. Why can't you just put in that, you know, changeable message sign and give people the option and help that situation out? So. Uh, Gail, may I, may I add to that? Yeah. S so uh, current 511, which incorporates uh, cell phone data mm. uh, from yeah. Google and Apple. Uh, is very reliable uh, as well as Google Maps. Um, even if it's just a routine trip, if you, if you start using that, it will it will detour you around delays like that. We're not. I don't think we're used to doing that necessarily because we're not in LA where they probably every time they walk out the door they do that. But we we aren't. But you're right, and we have the quick maps that Caltrans has, and and things like that. So. And you probably are going to have to do that in Bakersfield with all these new projects. And Gail, so if I may, through the chair, um, I spent a lot of time at Lost Hills here recently, and Woodward Avenue or Woodward Street, I can't remember, it's the light right there at Lost Hills, the only light. Yeah. If they were to go southbound, I think they would pick up, I'm not sure if it's 58 or 7th Standard, they would be able to pick up one of those other uh, main arteries that would take them at uh, 5 if they're going southbound. That way, you divert at least half the traffic that's trying to get the five to access it to go south to, to LA. So if you could pass that along to them, mm -hmm. um, I mean, they have to stop at that light anyways. Yeah. So if they're going to stop there, that's an intersection. Then if they can turn right, so if they can have a detour, basically. Yeah. And then uh, guide the detour out to that next major uh, street. Yeah. Okay. I'll pass that along. Any other comments? More Caltrans? Yes, more more projects. This is the uh, District 9 report for Eastern Kern. Uh, let's see. First of all, the, uh, the 58 slab replacement, that is underway. And uh, we're looking at, an, I guess, an end around, um, uh, you have the map? All of the map? You can look at it. Well, I have a visual aid here. And uh, so I'm just going to go over the projects on the map. Uh, the, the bottom, the three bottom blue uh, boxes, the Summit Bridge Rails, the Cache Creek Bridge Replacement, uh, and Mojave Maintenance Station, these are actually District 6 projects that are still sort of the handoff um, between responsibilities for Eastern Kern. And I believe, Gail, you went over uh, them. So we'll, we'll skip a couple of those. The maintenance, the Mojave maintenance station is still under, uh, uh, is still in the uh, construction process. Then there's the, uh, to the left, there's the uh, 58 slab replacement. 
and that is uh, construction is under is underway and it will be finished uh, I've been told by uh, midsummer the uh, ramp and gore lighting repair I'm not that if you want more information you'll have to get uh, you'll ha I'll have to get back to you so if you want to talk to me about that later but that means that they're repairing the lights at these ramps and you can see the two locations there's one on the top uh, left and then the bottom right you'll see then the uh, the Walker pass thin blanket that is just starting and it they're looking at it being finished so they're you know they're going to do a thin uh, uh, thin spreading of the asphalt uh, along the road there and it they're looking at it being finished or later this year so I'm, I'm saying November then the uh, in your current thin blanket that has not started yet so and again if you need more information about that that's in the upper uh, right hand corner again you can contact me the SB1 stri the uh, striping along Kern 58 that is happening and they're looking at uh, sort of the end of summer around August when it will be completed and then the Edward Mill and Phil where they're taking off a layer and then uh, putting new asphalt down that has been oh that's uh, let's see design let me just verify before I make anything up that is they've almost finished the design and they're looking at starting construction to it at the end of summer so. oh and then speaking of uh, electric vehicle charging stations they plan to have the uh, in near Boron the um, the rest stop there they will be starting construction of the charging stations that they plan uh, at the end of summer around August so. so that is it if you have any questions feel free to ask where you can uh, or I can get more details if you uh, email me thank you Caltrans district 9 I know your name's not Ryan no it's <laughs> no I know <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any questions for or Catherine? Seeing none. Executive Director Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. I have about um, five items quickly on this. On June 3rd, the eight uh, San Joaquin Valley COG directors uh, met with uh, ARB Chairwoman Mary Nichols, her staff. California Transportation Commission staff and several of the CTC board members in Modesto regarding um, technical review of our SCSs. Um, the outcome of the meeting was successful. We got um, everything we were asking for. Um, it's unfortunate we had to elevate it all the way to the chairwoman, but uh, we're, we are making progress in our um, disagreements with a ARB. Uh, on June 6th, I was in Tehachapi. I met with the district, mm -hmm. Caltrans District 9 director and represent the city manager of Tehachapi and some of their staff members. We discussed truck climbing lanes, Denison Road um, interchange, and operational issues uh, on Route 202. Um, June 12th, we held a um, State Route 46 uh, monthly, which, which will now be done monthly, status meeting. The county um, is making great progress. Uh, thank you, uh, Supervisor Scribner and Supervisor Couch is not here today for the efforts of your Public Works Department and specifically uh, Don Anderson. He's making great progress on getting us where we need to go, uh, where we need to be on Route 46 so we do not lose our $17.5 million built grant. Um, as both Nick and others have mentioned tonight, June 12th, I attended the Centennial Corridor groundbreaking. Congratulations to all parties involved. Uh, <laughs> that groundbreaking w was well over 30 years in the making. It's a, a momentous occasion. I look forward to the ribbon cutting in about three years. Um, next week, I will be attending the CTC meeting in Sacramento where um, 
we, the city of Bakersfield will likely receive uh, their first allocation for the mainline uh, construction, uh, first of four allocations that uh, Scoop Supervisor Scribner and I and uh, uh, Public Works Director um, Fiddler <laughs> negotiated a, about a, a year ago on a, a trip we took to Sacramento. That concludes my report on this agenda. Uh, Mr. Chairman, subject to any of your questions. Any questions for the director? Seeing none, any member statements? I have one. This is my last time, I promise. <laughs> I just wanted to thank all the cities that helped during Bike Month. Uh, Bike Bakersfield held over 33 events all over the county. We had over 600 people that participated in Full Moon Ride, um, Ride of Silence, bike rodeos all over the county. I want to thank our Blue Sky partners here at Kern Cog and uh, just we gave away 87 properly fit helmets, uh, 688 reflector and slap bracelets, and uh, 451 pedestrian light and bicycle uh, light sets. So I just want to thank everybody for helping us during or all of our partners get um, everybody for a successful bike month. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, we'll move into the current Council of Governments meeting. Roll call is the same. Any public comments? If I may be added to the yes. roll call <laughs> since I walked in late. Uh, She's got you. Thank you, Mr. Cantu. Consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda, again, are to consider to be routine and non-controversial and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. Any member of the public wish to comment on consent agenda? Any council member wish to comment? Saying none, can I have a motion? So move. Second. Roll call vote. Alvarado? Yes. Cantu? Yes. Crump? Yes. Garola? Yes. Lucinovich? Uh, yes. Bryant? Yes. <coughs> Maurer? Yes. Reyna? Yes. B. Smith? Yes. Scrivener? Aye. P. Smith? Yes. Thank you. Item four, board appointment of an alternate to the San Joaquin Valley Policy Council, Ms. Napier. Yes, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the Kern Cog Board. Uh, the San Joaquin Valley Regional Policy Council is a 16-member board that consists of two elected officials from each of the eight regional transportation planning agencies in the San Joaquin Valley. The Policy Council was established in 2006 to provide a forum for the Valley to communicate, discuss, and collaborate on issues that impact the entire region, such as transportation, air quality, and advo advocacy efforts. The Policy Council works regionally to build consensus on items that when implemented by individual regional planning agencies results in a single vision for the entire San Joaquin Valley. The meetings are typically held three times per year in alternating locations in the Valley. Uh, the meetings are scheduled for 10 a.m. and a call-in number is provided. Um, Board Member Vallejo has uh, indicated an interest in being more active um, with the Policy Council. Uh, she is currently not a member or an alternate. We currently have two, mem two appointed members and one alternate. And um, we can appoint a second alternate if, if the board so chooses. So I will leave that up to you. Thank you. Any comment or motion from board members? So is this um, something that we're adding on by request or by need? 
Do we need a, another? Do we need a second alternate? Just out of curiosity. We we, we don't uh, need one. Uh, Council Member Vallejo ha has has asked if the uh, the board would consider this. Okay. So is uh, are we seeking a nomination or do we are we seeking also uh, other additional nominees? It's, it, it's completely at the pleasure of the board. If you okay. if you want to uh, nominate uh, Council Ms. Member Vallejo, Vallejo you may do else. that. If you don't want to do anything, or if you want to uh, nominate anyone else as an alternate or change the primaries, you're you're welcome to do that also. Because currently, Aaron, it's myself and Mr. Garcia, right, Alex? Correct. Are the primaries and uh, Council Member Smith is is the alternate? Uh, Council Member Bob Smith. I'm sorry. Fortunately, Grace isn't here <laughs> to speak <laughs> up for herself. <laughs> um, should we wait if no one else is uh, asking to be considered, uh, or does anyone nominate someone? I mean, Grace isn't here, so unfortunately, you know. I if you feel that it would be more appropriate, your board could continue this item to the next meeting. Um, so that council member Vallejo could be present. Yeah. Would you guys want to continue it? Yeah, I'll make a motion to continue this item to the next meeting. Okay. I have a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item is continued. Executive director's report. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman and board members. Uh, as some of you know, first of all, thank you to all of you that were here yesterday. We are undergoing a um, federal four-year certification review. Uh, the review team uh, was made up of Federal Highway Administration, uh, Federal Transit Administration, and Caltrans Headquarters, District 6 and District 9. Mr. Antonio Johnson uh, led the team, and he has a few remarks for us tonight. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Director, and thanks, Board, for having me here today. Um, my purpose here right now is basically twofold. One, um, you know, under federal law, you all are the MPO, being that you are the Board of Directors. And so, out of respect, I should tell you that I'm here. So, everyone, I'm here today <laughs> for maybe another 10 or 15 minutes. Um, but secondly, um, to j let you know that the reason we're here, and we're here, we are, we have been here to do a certification review. And for those who have never gone through the certification review process, what that is is under federal law of all urbanized area over 200,000, United States DOT has to certify that that council of government or a metropolitan planning organization is operating their transportation planning process in compliance with federal law. Um, and so. This process included a desk review that started about 60 days ago and a site visit, which we are concluding today. And what I would tell you, the conclusion of that site visit tentatively, which means I still have to go back to my office in Sacramento, look at some things, um, and make a final determination and, and send it up through my chain of command. But the tentative conclusion is current Council of Government is being certified for the next four years. Um, with that, I just like to say thanks to the staff here. They they was very professional over the last couple of days, very professional over the last two and a half months, um, and the work that they're doing here, they really affirmed what I heard about current Council of Government when I came to the California Division in January, that they were on point, doing a good job, and, and really being very innovative on how they carried out the planning process here. And so over the next month, as I write the report, um, you can expect maybe two or three recommendations. These are not bad things. Um, part of my job is stewardship. How can we get better? And so these recommendations will really be, okay, this is probably an area where you can get better in, but you're good. Uh, and then, two, we did see some things that are very commendable, and we want to document that in that report, too, and, and give kudos where kudos are due. With that, um, I'm, I'm open to listen to any questions that you may have. And if not, in about five or ten minutes, I will conclude my portion and, and head on back to Sacramento. <laughs> All right, any questions? I see no questions. I thank you very much. Thank you. 
for your visit and your help. Thank you. For your visit and your help. Thank you. I have a couple more items, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yesterday, uh, many of you were here for a luncheon uh, that Kern Cog hosted with Egon Terp Terplan from the governor's office. Thank you all for coming. I've gotten nothing but positive feedback from the governor's office and from uh, the attendees. There was also a separate meeting after our lunch with uh, uh, community leaders from education, um, groundwater, water, um, private industry builders, uh, and uh, in including uh, a member of the audience today uh, representing um, labor. Thank, thank you for coming, Mr. Spaulding. Um, and uh, I had dinner with uh, the representative from the uh, governor's office last night. He is uh, extremely excited and happy and uh, looks forward to coming back again. Left uh, very, very impressed by what we're doing here in Kern County. Uh, thank you uh, expressly to Supervisor Scribner for arranging uh, the helicopter tour earlier in that morning, uh, included in that helicopter tour were the um, uh, two representatives from Federal Highways and Federal Transit and a representative from the Governor's Office, and thank you for joining on us on that, Supervisor Scrivener. Um, in addition to the um, last several days, there was a public listening session held here last night from 5 to 7 that was uh, attended by one member from Golden Empire Transit. We appreciate it, but I, I think the reason why we did not get a uh, response is because people uh, trust what Kern Cog does, trust what this board does, and, and there was not, uh, there, there were, weren't any people breaking down the doors to come to our public listening session. In your folders this evening is a uh, program from the Centennial uh, Ceremony a new uh, Kern Council of Governments news and events, two-sided, which was just updated this morning with pictures from yesterday. A Google Earth view that was provided by the pilots from the Kern County Sheriff's Office that shows you exactly where we went on our aerial tour. A timeline co covering the next six months. April through May uh, cash disbursements and information that uh, Ms. Urata went over earlier today. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, we also have a closed session if there's nothing else, and that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you. We are adjourned to closed session. First, any reportable action, I guess, from closed session. There is no reportable action taken. Thank you. Uh, so we're back to open session. And do we have any member statements? Um, you know what? Uh, we, um, we definitely wanted uh, to commend both um, Aaron and the staff for your four-year certification and uh, we, we know, uh, at least from my public experience with uh, schools and, and cities, and um, you know, getting a certification takes a lot of work. And we know that you invested two and a half days, if not more. Uh, I'm sure plenty of hours. So if you can commend your staff on our, on our behalf, and I'm sure we all agree yeah. that um, uh, if, there's, if, you rec if you'd like, if there's anything else we can do, please uh, bring, bring it to our attention. But, um, but uh, we're very... We're very blessed to have a great staff that can uh, can keep us uh, recertified every four years. So thank you uh, for everything you guys do for us. We, we'll do, uh, Mayor Cantu, and and thank you. And and uh, FHWA and FTA were were incredibly uh, impressed by the turnout yesterday, um, and the the level of knowledge of of our elected officials in Kern County. That was displayed both yesterday and today, and and with interview interviews with uh, the chairman. They did interview the chairman as part of their certification mm -hmm. process. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? 
Seeing none, we stand adjourned.